Hi, I'm Boone. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to make ourselves some crash wall. So, if you remember in the prior series of videos, we did the corner. And what we're going to do is just keep on carrying around the layout. In the next area, we got to build some crash wall. So, let's do this. Okay, so if you remember right, we went ahead and we, we did this section of the layout over here with our fencing and our guardrail. And what we're gonna do on this, this area through here is we're gonna go ahead and build ourselves some concrete crash wall. So we're just gonna kind of carry it down through and it's gonna go all the way down around the corner to the end of this section. So we have our cable and we'll finally get to mount our cable onto our crash wall and everything else. So let's get started on this. All right. So this is going to be another project where we're going to use some polystyrene board. So if you've seen my prior videos, you realize how much polystyrene we use. So that's what we're going to make our crash wall out of. But before we do that, set that off to the side, we got to figure out how tall we want to make our crash wall. So if we come down to the edge of our guardrail right here, these guardrails are uh, roughly about three and a half centimeters or an inch and a half tall. So if I go right here and that gets us right at three and a half centimeters, or if we flip it the other way to inches, we've got an inch and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut some strips of the polystyrene at that inch and a half or that three and a half centimeters. And uh, we'll start making some crash wall. All right, so I went ahead and I have some polystyrene that I went ahead and cut off. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and take a ruler and we're gonna measure out our height. So let's do it in metric today. So let's go to that three and a half. And we'll just go ahead and make some marks down here, three and a half. And then what we will do is go ahead and shoot a line down here and cut this off. And when we come back, we will have a strip at three and a half centimeters. Okay, so I went ahead and I have my line all scribed all the way down our polystyrene. So now what you need is a like a razor knife or an X-Acto blade something that's real sharp and what we want to do is just go ahead and cut this down through so get your line kind of set like so and once you have that it might take a couple cuts to go through just go ahead and Crack that off and we'll have our strip of uh, three and a half centimeters. Okay, so I have my polystyrene all cut and you can notice how it's a little bit rough and whatnot on the edges. It's okay. Um, again, it's rough over on this side too. It has a seam that goes down through it. When it broke off, it kind of made some a little bit of texture. But for what we got going on right here, this is plenty fine. So what we're gonna need to do with this though, is we can't use it at that width. It's just, you know, it's just not gonna work. So what we're gonna need to do is split this in half. Now, this is one inch polystyrene, okay? So we're gonna go on ahead and split this at a half inch. So grab your pencil and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and put some marks through this at a half inch, okay? So once we have all our marks done, I'll go ahead and I'll get a line down here through the middle and then we'll grab our razor knife and when we come back, we'll start slicing this down the middle. Okay, so I went ahead and I scribed the line all the way down through the middle of this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with a razor knife but if you have one of those uh, heat knives that they, they use for polystyrene, man, that, that would be really cool in a situation like this. But I'm gonna show you that it can be done with just a regular razor knife. So 
what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna go ahead and again, just come down through it and follow my line, okay? And this takes a little while to do it. So just have, your, have some patience and just slowly work this down through, okay? So I'm just gonna keep on proceeding on cutting this down. You can see how it's, it's going down a little bit more each time. And we come back, I'll have this all cut into two parts. Okay, so I went ahead and I had these two pieces sliced out. And now our inside kind of looks a little bit rough, right? Now, if you had one of those foam knives, this would be a real nice, clean, even cut. But since we used a razor knife, it's not as clean. So what we want to do is to go ahead and now I've, I've sanded this. And what we want to do is just go ahead and get it sanded out. All right, so what I'm using is some 80 grit sandpaper or I have like a sanding block, okay? So, and all we're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and sand this off and make it smooth. So let me put that one off to the side and I'll grab this and just kind of give you an idea what we're going after. Nice thing about a block is that you can set it on there. It's gonna be nice and flat. If you use sandpaper, you're gonna have a tendency of rolling your edges. And what we wanna do is make sure that our edges are nice and crisp. So by doing that, you know, you really wanna use a, a sanding block to do this. So all we're gonna do is just go ahead and sand this down a little bit. And just work our way down it. And smooth it out. So, a little bit more on this, and we'll stop and see where we're at. There we go. And that's pretty much what we're after right there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and sand this side and down here on this. When we come back, we'll start addressing the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys something one other tr little trick here. Now, I'm sanding these and I have them side by side, okay? So I have my block and I'm sanding them this way, okay? That way, I know that they're both gonna be the same thickness, okay? But if I come down here on the edge, see how we have one that's higher than the other, okay? So, this works out really good. And what, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and sand this one down So, and I'm using the one next to it as a guide of where I need to be. So when I, when I get this down to, a, to the thickness that I want, then I can go ahead and rest my block on both, both panels and work it together, okay? And the nice thing about that is that your, uh, your crash barrier won't be all distorted. Everything will be pretty much uniform, okay? So if we look down this, we can see how we're pretty much the same thickness all the way across, all right? So I was doing this and I thought, I didn't tell you guys about this. So here we go. So I wanted to make sure that, we, we ex that I explained that. So again, lay them right next to each other. You've got one that is definitely higher than the other. Hold them in place, take your block, work this, this upper one, so the one that's taller, work that one, okay? And get that down there. Now I'm focusing more on this back one. I'm gonna get it so I feel then it's pretty close. Then taking my block and I am sanding the two together so that they're the same thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this little spot. When we come back, we'll start addressing these. So I went ahead and I have both these guys sanded and they match up real well. 
okay? So real close to the same thickness. So at this point in time, what we wanna do is go ahead and sand these edges. So again, let's go ahead and put this up on end. And let's see, some of that, we'll peel that off a little bit. But what we're gonna do is take our sanding block again, and we're just gonna smooth it out, okay? You don't wanna, don't wanna dig on it too much. We just wanna go ahead and smooth it down a little bit. Once you have it, let's see here, like so, it'll be ready to go. So I'll just go ahead and take care of the rest of this side and come back on this other. But before I do that, let's go to the rougher side, okay? So on the rougher side, again, it's just like it was on the other side. Just gonna go ahead and smooth it out. Okay. Noticing I'm not going back and forth. I'm actually picking the block up, setting it down, dragging it back. I'm not coming forward. And the reason why I'm not coming forward is that if it catches the edge on this, like that, it'll just rip a big chunk out of it. So when you drag it back, make sure that's at an angle, in a sense, so that it's not you know, gonna hit there. We wanna have it more towards the back of it. Okay, so applying pressure towards the back and just drawing it back. Okay, just draw it back. So, just like so. So I'll keep on doing this and we come back, we'll see how it turned okay, out. Okay, so I went ahead and I have both sides sanded, okay? So at this point in time, I'm gonna lay my two pieces together. And like we did when we were sanding the thickness on the height, we're gonna do the same thing. And this is just, just one of those little extra things that just helps you a little bit. So again, we're, we're sanding by dragging the block back. And we're just making sure that, you know, everything is within, acceptable um, tolerances. So if we look at this area in here, we can see how this is off just a little bit. So let's just go ahead and hit that, whoop, hit that lightly. Bring that together. And once you have that all complete, we almost got it complete. We will come back and uh, go on to the next Our step. Wall all roughed in and sanded. Now one side is the side that you sanded, which is this side. And the other side is the natural surface that's on the board itself. It's a little bit, it, it's tighter, okay? This area has more, it's more porous. So what I'm gonna do since this side over here that we have not sanded is stronger than this side. I'm gonna make sure that this side, the area that we did not sand, is gonna be facing towards the track. And the reason why I'm doing that, it just, it makes it a little bit stronger as far as if cars come in contact with it. So there's that portion of it. Um, the other thing that we wanna make sure is which side do we want, um, to be exposed on top. So if we look at these two sides, you know, I've, I've got it sanded down pretty good. Now there are a little bit of uh, divots on this side where there's not so much on this other side. And I'm actually gonna go with the side with a little bit of divots on it because I want my wall to have a little bit of character on the top portion of it. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and mount this down. Now up to this point, I've went ahead and I've laid down polystyrene and my joint compound and my acrylic paint to represent the dirt on top of that. Now I've covered that in quite a few different videos, so we're just gonna skip that portion on this one. If you if you want to, to know how to do this, uh, there's just, 
go through the library of the videos. There's a, there's a lot of different videos that we cover this. So at this point in time, we need to go ahead and mount this down. Now, if we look at this, we can see down in here how we have this gap. The nice thing about polystyrene is that it's real pliable. We can bend it, we can, we can do all sorts of stuff with this, right? But one of the things that we need to do is figure out exactly how we're gonna mount it up. So if I put it right into this area like that, and that's pretty much how I want it to, to look. I need to get it to stay there. Now, if this was right on the straightaway right here, it's not so much a big deal, but on corners and whatnot, to try to keep it to, to keep it shape is a little bit more of, a, of an ordeal. So what I've done, is just taking some simple toothpicks, just wooden toothpicks like so, all right? And what we're gonna do is take these toothpicks and we're just gonna go ahead and push them right down in our wall, like so. And so we have uh, some material that's hanging down so we can set this into the polystyrene and it'll keep the shape. So I need one down here at the end, obviously. I'm gonna put a couple more in it till I get up to this point so I can keep this contour in here. So let me go ahead and just, kind of, right? So we come back, I'll go ahead and I will have a few more toothpicks placed in this area. Well, here we go. So I went ahead and I have my toothpicks in and you notice I am closer together down towards the area where we're gonna have a bunch of turns and stuff going on and then as it gets down here towards the straightaway they're further apart these are probably about 12 inches apart and these guys down in here anywhere from an inch and a half to an inch apart depending on how tight of a turn that we're gonna do so at this point it's ready to go ahead and glue in now you could use PVA if you wanted to and put PVA down through this. One thing if you're gonna use PVA and you have turns like this, you really wanna make sure that you get it right. Because if you put the PVA on it and you walk away for the night and you come back the next morning and if it's not square, well, your PVA is gonna, you're gonna have to re-glue it, put it that way. So what I like to use is hot glue. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get some hot glue in the area through our corner right here. The nice thing about hot glue is that it's going to it's going to dry for us real quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a bead between these areas. One downside about hot glue is it's kind of messy. So just like so, and then I'm gonna come off of here to this next one and just do a bead to that point. So there's that. Now, let's get this thing set down in here. So we wanna make sure that we're lined up on this side over here and start putting the toothpicks in the place. Just like so, get it down through here, get that set, there we go, and what we'll do is I'll just go ahead and hold this in until it's dried and make sure that I have the, the angle that I want on this back side. And then once that is dry, we'll start to work our way down the straightaway. All right, so now that we have this area set, now we have this all the way down. Now we couldn't glue the whole entire uh, wall down at one time because by the time we got that set and whatnot, the glue would start to kick. So like I showed you, we only went up to a certain area. Now. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and get this in here. Like so, up to, ah, and that's hot stuff, man. 
and uh, we'll just go ahead and glue this down in sections. So there's that. Bring this up just a little bit. Down to the next area. Set that down. And I'm just going to work my way down here. Make sure I, I'm where I want to be. So once we got this, we will set it right into its resting spot. Go like that. Set this down, make sure it's nice and square. And there we go. We've got our wall glued onto our layout. Now the, the hot glue would take a couple minutes to, to harden up. And uh, when, it's, when it's all set, we'll move on to the next section over here. So what we need to do now is go ahead and do this corner here. So what I'm going to do is get this lined up and get it laid out to where I want it to be. And I want it to be a little bit close to the track down here. You know, I don't want it off to the side. Uh, this is one area of the track that I actually want it to be fairly close and actually work as a wall. So. What I'm going to do is get that lined up, and then I'm going to make a mark right here at the edge, and I'm going to have my wall stopped right at this point, right before the, the controller. So at that point, I'm just going to go ahead and take my razor knife, and I'm just going to go ahead and slice this down. Get a little bit of a break. And now, it's ready to go ahead and put toothpicks in it so we can make that corner. Okay, so I went ahead and I have the wall in and it goes all the way down around the corner, right through there. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and work on some seams every so often on this. Now, I split these at about uh, six and a half inches. And what I'm doing is I went ahead and put a mark at the top, so it's six and a half inches. I'm just taking a razor knife, and what I'm doing is just lightly cutting into it, okay? And then putting a line just like so. And what we're doing is just creating some little seams. So like when they made the, uh, the concrete wall, these were their little seams in it. And then once I put my little bit of a mark in, I'm taking the back side of this and just kind of dressing that up a little bit more. So at that point, I'm not using the razor anymore. I'm using the, the flat edge. I'm just dragging it across. And what this does, just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on through and put the seams in all the way down our wall. Okay, so at this point, I went ahead and I got all my seams put in all the way down our wall. Now I'm gonna take a wire brush. And the wire brush, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some texture to it, okay? Um, if you want it to be just a pristine wall, you know, that's all nice and finished off, say, you want to go ahead and paint each one of these a different color all the way down. You may not want to put very much texture into it. What I'm going to do is make this into like a gray concrete uh, type of crash wall. So being that's going to be like a concrete, I want to have a little bit of texture in it so that, you know, it looks a little bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do with this is just lightly drag it across and just give it a little bit of texture, not a whole bunch, but just enough, just to, just to kind of break up the smoothness of it. Okay, so 
just coming across like so. So just kind of like that. Now when it comes up on the top, I'm just going to hit it lightly as well. Okay. It's just going to add a little bit of texture. Just like so. And once you get it to how you want to make it look, like so, I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper, and then I'm just going to dress this out, this edge. And what I'm doing is making a little bit of a bevel right on the top so that it doesn't come to a, a sharp point. I'm just crowning that just a tad all the way down. So after I texture it, I'll just drag this down it. Just like so, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and carry this down throughout the whole entire wall and we come back, we'll take it to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and got the texture all the way down the wall, and that's on both sides. We beveled the top, we have our seams in it. Now, what we need to do is go ahead and take some joint, uh, drywall joint compound, which is just simple joint compound. And what I'm doing is just go ahead and applying it to our polystyrene. What this is going to do is a couple different things. One, it gives it effect, so it looks like we have mortar joints down in our seams. Another thing is, is through our texture here, if we have any holes like down in here and whatnot, it'll kind of bridge them over, makes it look a little bit more realistic. And it also gives a good base to go ahead and paint on top of. Because on these polystyrene, a lot of times it'll have printed... Um, Oh, it just has the, the prints of the size and design that's, and it's on the face of it. And what that'll do, if you don't put on any joint compounds, when you go to paint it, well, like with an acrylic, it'll bleed through and you'll see that. But with the joint compound, it almost works as a primer, so it seals it into place. So what I've done is, is up to this point. And all I'm doing is a real thin coat. We don't need a real thick coat of this at all. So pretty much just putting it on. Let's see here. Put this set on to it. And just kind of work it down into your seams. And kind of draw it across. And you can see how this just starts to fill everything in. Now we don't want to go thick with this. We want it to be a real thin coat. And it's not as important on the outside of it, but it's a lot more important on the inside of it that we want a thin coat. Because if our cars come in contact with it, if it's thick, it's going to have a tendency to go ahead and chip. And if we keep it thin, it won't chip. So make sure that you keep a nice thin coat, just enough to, to fill in some of the little imperfections and whatnot. And you can see here, we can always take our fingernail and dress that out so we can make the line a little bit more pronounced. And if you want to add more texture to it while you're doing this, just take your brush and just lightly hit it. And you can see how it just kind of brings a little bit more texture up to the surface. So what I'm going to do is just keep on applying this joint compound. When we come back, we'll be ready for the next step, which is to paint. Okay, so now we're ready for the paint process. So our uh, joint compound is all dry, and you can see how we've got all our texture on here, and it looks good. So now what we need to do is go ahead and paint it with a wash. And this is a gray wash that um, if you've looked at some of the other uh, videos, like the one on brick and on stone and the rocks, it's the same type of process that we're going to go ahead and use on this. So what this is, is a watered down acrylic. And it's just a gray that I made up. 
with some black and some white and threw some other colors in there until I was happy with the tone of it. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and apply it on here. So the nice thing about a wash is that it just kind of runs right down into everything. So I'm using kind of a smaller stiff bristle brush. And what we're doing is just working it down through. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this area all done with the gray and we come back we'll go ahead and use a black wash to do our highlights. All right, so went ahead and I have the gray wash down and now I have a black wash and this is made from weak black and a whole bunch of water. So what we've done is really diluted out of black so that when you apply it, it just starts to go into the uh, the recesses that are, are set down in there. So what we want to do with this is just hit our cracks and kind of give it highlights. So just kind of go through. This will give it effect of kind of like some staining and uh, just gives it that little extra bit of depth. It'll make your um, texture stand out a little bit more. And you notice I'm not doing the whole entire thing. I'm just kind of spotting it around here and there, but more or less concentrating on these seams. So we get that. Just go ahead and kind of blend it out. And that's how you do that. So if we just kind of work it on down again, let it go there. And just kind of hit it and there we go okay so now we have all that down we got our washes in place we've let it dry now what we want to do is i'm going to go ahead and take some oyster white which is kind of an off white it's not real bright and i put a little bit down here on a board and what i'm doing is i have a stiff bristle brush and what we're going to do is a, a dry brush on this so just kind of work it in there and kind of clear the brush a little bit, okay? So you don't want it real heavy. And what we're doing is just hitting the surfaces of this. And what that's going to do is help with the highlights and some of our texture, say our texture right down in here. So we're just going to hit this lightly. And it just brings it out that much more. Just that little bit of white on there really does a, a number on it. So remember to clear your brush. You don't want it all loaded up. And we're just going to hit this like so. Just kind of work it down to where you're happy with it. light out of the way and there we go so a little bit of br dry brushing I'll go ahead and finish this up we come back we'll take it from there okay so we have all of our highlights done as far as with our uh, white dry brush and you can just see how it just makes it pop that little bit more so it's all the way down I've done inside and out and at this point in time what I want to do is well We'll back up a little bit. We did that, and then I came in and I touched up my, my ground cover and made sure that my, my brown paint is all applied and is dry. So now that we have that, what we're going to do now is come back in and we're going to go ahead and lay some grass and some flock down. Now, being that this area of the layout is right next to a high traffic area for me, the approach on this is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and use the green flock that we made in a, in a prior video. Actually, we made brown, but it's the same way. It's the sawdust flock. And we're going to utilize that with some static grass. And we're going to go ahead and cover this area and take it down through the corner over there. So we come back, 
we'll start applying our Maj Podge and putting down our first layer of green flock. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take some Maj Podge and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it down in here and just get kind of a, a good covering down in there and get it kind of up next to our, our wall right here. So just like that. And then go ahead and cover this out too. So I'm gonna take my grass out, not all the way, all the way out to the edge. I'm just gonna kind of take it to just shy of it because this area of the layout I come in contact with quite a bit. So I don't want grass too far out or all I'm gonna end up doing is just knocking that grass off of there. So I'm just gonna carry this down through like so. And get this down in the corner right there. Okay. So I'm just gonna take this down a little bit further and we're gonna do it in sections. Okay, so we got our Maj Podge all down. Now I'm just taking a little bit of green flock and what I'm gonna do is just put this right down here on the edge. So I'm gonna get just some loaded up here and sprinkle it down. And then what I'm gonna do from there, let's grab this handy dandy brush I got here and we're just going to go ahead and spread this out and this is going to work down in that area and it's going to fill those gaps a little bit just like so Kind of spread that out and just leave it like that and I'll come in and I'll do the rest down in this area so we come back we'll get ready for some static grass all right so I went ahead and I got the uh, the green flock down now I just have some four millimeter static grass and I put a pan down below right below me so that when I'm right on the edge any excess just goes into my pan and I don't lose any more grass than what I what I do. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get this down there. Set this grass down. Just like so. And you can see how she's all standing up real good. like that okay just a little bit more and there we are so I'll just keep on carrying this all the way down you can see how the grass kind of goes up over our flock on the edge and uh, when we come back we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll do our cleanup and uh, it'll be just about out done all right so I went ahead and we have all our static grass down and we've cleaned it up now what I'm doing are grass tufts and we made the grass tufts in our last series of videos and what I'm doing is just kind of filling in some of the little gaps so we have some area that's a little bit thin and what I'm doing is just putting a little grass tuft in there and with the Maj Paj since it dries clear and it has a matte finish to it, the little bit of white that we see here is all gonna dry up and it's all gonna go away. So what we can do with all these little tufts is just grab one, get a little bit of glue on it. And if we find an area that looks a little bit thin, so let's say we just wanna put one right in here and set this guy down and it works good as a filler. So you can see how we've kind of gone through, put some grass tufts here and there along there. And uh, it just adds that little 
extra little kick to it. So at this point, I'll finish up our grass tufts and we'll come back and we'll see how it all so looks. So we went ahead and I have all our grass tufts in, but I almost forgot about our guide wire. So from the video that we did prior down here, remember we had our guide wire and we never set it up. Well, now we have a place to put it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of super glue and just put it right here on the end, like so. And stretch this guy down. And find a home for him right in here. And there we go. So now we have our guide wire from our crash fence to our concrete crash wall. All right, so we got our guide wire in, it's all done, and we have our wall all complete. If you look at it, you can see how the blotchiness of the, the wash and how it really gives it a unique and uh, realistic look to it. So if we look on the inside of it, just like it was on the outside, it just goes all the way down through. And I mean, it, it, it's cool looking, you know, it gives it that little extra push. And our texture that we have, you can see the texture in it. And it looks like a real concrete wall. So if we follow this all the way down through, here through the corner, down to the end right here. Now, like we did with the other series of videos, this will be another series of videos. And we have something planned for this corner right here. So when we come back next video, we'll be attacking this, but you can see how everything looks nice and uniform. So yeah, it's a nice addition to the layout. So let's go ahead and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we got ourselves some crash wall. So if you like this video, like it, share it with others and subscribe to my channel. And we got that little thing at the top, the Facebook thing. You know, if you click that, it'll take you over to Facebook to a group that's designated for this channel. And from there, we can share things. You can see what I'm doing. I can see what you guys are doing. It's pretty cool. Get answers, questions. Ah, pretty cool stuff. So we'll leave that alone. But next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, we're going to be back over here. We'll be working in that corner. So... See you guys later.